Hey there, Sam. Let's take a moment and look at our routes. Currently, we only have built our user routes, but they are already occupying these many lines of code. Imagine we're building a giant app, and there are hundreds of resources in our app. Now, listing every one of them in this api.php file is definitely not the way to go, because we'll end up having a thousand lines of code, and things will become very messy. So what can we do then? One way of solving this is to create dedicated route files for each individual resource. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called API and create a users.php file in it. That will copy all of the user routes and paste it inside this user.php file. And import the routes for SaaS here just to stop our IDE from complaining. And now we'll go back to API.php and load our user routes using the require keyword and supply the path to our user routes. And that's it. And now to check if our code is working, we'll go to our terminal and type in php artisan route list. And as you can see here, all of our user routes are registered as before. So by organizing our routes in this way, we can keep our API file very clean and maintainable. Now the next thing I want to talk about is something called the route group. So let's go back to our user's route. And here sometimes we just want to add the same middleware, route name or route prefix to a group of routes. For a single route, it is simple enough. To add a middleware, we just need to call the middleware helper function from the route facade. Just for demonstration, I'll add the off middleware to the get user index route. And now if we go back to our terminal again and run PHP Addison route list, we can see that our index endpoint has an additional middleware, the off middleware that we just added. That is simple enough, but in order to apply this off middleware to all of our routes here, Copying and pasting this method to every one of them is just too tedious. So a better way to do this is to define a route group. Let's do that. So to apply the off middleware to all of the routes here, we'll first call the middleware helper function, and after that we'll call the group method. The group method accepts a callback function, and inside the function is where we define all of our routes. Any routes that we put inside this callback function will be grouped together. And now let's go back to our terminal again and run route list. And here we see that all of the routes now have the off middleware attached to them. Route group is an amazing feature that can really help us to organize our routes. We can also use it to easily add a prefix to every member in a group. To do that, we just need to call the prefix method. And here, if I pass in heya inside a function argument, this will prepend the word heya before all the user routes here. So if we go back to our terminal and run route list again, you can see Laravel has added heya to all of the user's routes. We can also add route name prefix to our group. Route names are routes or layers, so that we can easily refer to a particular route in Laravel, even if the route's URL has been changed at a certain point in the future. Referring to a route using its name can ensure a consistent behavior of our application in the long run. The reason is because the route's URL is more likely to change than the route's name. So I'll always encourage people to give their routes a name. And to give a particular route a name, all we need to do is to call the name method on the routes definition. And the convention that I use is the resource name and the method name, separated by a dot. So now if we go back to our terminal and run route list again, we can see that our index method has now got a name, users index. And now back to our code, we can add a name prefix to our group. All we need to do is to call the name method before the group helper method and pass in the name prefix that we want to add to each route. So go back to our terminal again, run route list, and now all of our routes have a user dot prefix added to them. Having this, that means in the name argument for each route, we just need to pass in the method name. So for the index route, I can safely remove the user's prefix. And for the rest of the routes here, I'll use a bit of cursor magic. And boom, it's done. Let's go back to our terminal to verify it. Beautiful. And now I also want to point out that instead of calling the name method, you can also call the as method, which is doing the same thing as the name method. So go back to our terminal again, run our command, and we get the same result. All right, next, we also got a method called namespace. We use this helper method to help Laravel to find the controller class. For example, here, our user controller class is living inside the app HTTP controller's namespace. So we'll call the namespace method and pass in our controller's namespace. 
Once we specify the namespace, we can just invoke the methods in our controller class using a string. For example, I'll duplicate our index route, and in the second argument, I can now invoke the index method in our user controller class in a different way. That is, I'll supply the class name directly, followed by an add symbol and a method name, which is index. And now if we go back to our terminal, rerun the command, and everything is working as before. Personally, I don't really like this approach. The reason is because it's a bit magical. I will much prefer the previous syntax because I can tell right away what it is doing. And it has a much better support on the auto-completion of our IDE. Anyway, it's a personal preference. It is up to you on which one you like better. We can also put this routes attribute in an array. Here's the alternate syntax for what we have already got here. We will call the group method directly from the route facade. And for the first argument, we'll pass in an array. And the array is basically a mapping of the route attributes and their values. So we'll just write down what we've got before in the array. The second argument will be a callback function, and that's where we put in our routes. And just for demonstration, we'll copy and paste all the routes from before and comment out our previous code. Now, one thing we need to be aware is that for the array syntax, if we want to give our routes a name prefix, we can't use the name key. We gotta use the as key. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So let's change it to as and we'll go back to our terminal, run the command, and everything works just like before. So far, so good. Again, here's the question which syntax should I use? The array syntax or the method syntax? And again, my answer is it's up to you. It's a personal preference, and both of them would work just fine. I prefer the method syntax, so I'm just going to comment out the array syntax and bring back our previous code. And now I want to point out one more thing before we move on. If we want to attach multiple middleware at the same time, what we can do is to pass an array into the middleware method. So for example, if I want to add the redirect if authenticated middleware, I can just put in the full class name here. And now let's go to our terminal again. We can see that every route here has now got the new middleware. All right, time to put everything together. Let's talk about a real world scenario on how route group can really help us to organize our routes. So in large application, we often find ourselves the need of creating multiple versions of API endpoints. For example, let's say we have two versions, version one and version two. The endpoints in version one might be using an older technology stack, but it is fully tested and production ready. And we've got a lot of clients who use it for many, many years without any issues. And now in the recent years, the company has decided to upgrade the whole system and to use a newer technology stack. So the company introduced a new set of API endpoints and they call it version two. Now the endpoints in version two have different syntax and convention compared to version one. New clients are encouraged to use the version two API endpoints, but maybe not for the existing clients, they are using version one. Not until they have migrated their code base to version two. So that means the company needs to provide two sets of API endpoints for the old clients and for the new clients. So now knowing this scenario, let's learn how we can solve this using route group. Back to our code. To tackle this issue, I'll create a new folder called version one in our API folder. Then I'll move my user's route file into the v1 folder. So that means all the routes in the user file belongs to our version one endpoint now. And now if we go back to api.php, we'll refactor the required path. And now we'll create a new group that has a prefix of version one. That means if the client wants to call version one endpoints, they just need to supply v1 in the route URL. So if we go back to our terminal, run route list, we can see that all of the routes has a v1 prefix, and that means that belongs to the version 1 endpoints. By having this structure, it's very easy for us to add a new set of endpoints. We just need to create a new folder called version 2 in our API folder here, and proceed to define new routes in that folder. And after that, just reference them in our api.php file with the correct prefix. We haven't defined the routes for comments and posts yet. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. The solution will be in the repository for this project. The link is in the description. Okay, now, two more things before we end the lesson. Let's go back to our users route. And here, since we added the off middleware to our users group here, every route will have the off middleware attached to it. Sometimes we want to exclude a particular route from the group middleware. For example, I want to exclude the off middleware from the index route. What we can do is to call the method without middleware on the route definition. 
and the method accepts the middleware name that we want to exclude in its argument. I'll pass it off in this case. And now if we go back to our terminal, list our routes again. And here you can see that the index method no longer has the off middleware. Looking great. The second thing I want to talk about is we can apply constraint to the URL parameter. I will show you what I mean. At the moment, the user parameter in our show route can be anything. It can be a number or string. We can tell Laravel to only match a certain character for this endpoint by calling the where method. So in our case here, the user parameter is supposed to be a number. So let's call the where method and implement the constraint. The first argument is the name of the parameter. In our case, it will be user. And the second argument is a regular expression to tell Laravel how do we want to match the parameter. In our case here, we want user to be a number. So I just want to restrict it to numeric value, which can be done by putting in the 0 to 9 character set, followed by a plus character to match any numbers of character. So now in theory, Laravel will only trigger the controller of this route if we provide a numeric value as the user parameter. Let's test our route. I'll comment out the off middleware because we haven't done any authentication logic yet. And we'll go to Postman and try to find user number 1. It's working. That's great. And now if we change the number 1 to some random string, and we see an error. It says that the get method is not supported for this route. This is because Laravel is no longer matching string for our show route. And that means our constraint is working. If you're not familiar with regular expression, Laravel has a few helper method for us to quickly define constraints for the URL parameter. So here, as you can see in the autocomplete, we have where alpha, where alpha numeric, and where number. Alpha means alphabet, so Laravel will only match alphabetical character for the parameter. Alpha numeric means both alphabets and numbers, and numbers is for numbers. In our case here, we're going to choose where number. In the argument, we just need to supply our parameter name, which is user. And that's it. Key takeaway for this lesson, route group can help us to effectively organize our API routes. We can either use the array syntax or the method syntax to define a route group. We can add URL prefix, route name prefix, namespace, or middleware to a route group. The where method is useful to add matching constraint to a URL parameter. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.